Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I am Rajni Khan and today's video I will discuss config server and how to set up config server. So we'll details we'll gonna see what is config server and why we required that one in microservice uh, space. So this is a continuation of microservices uh, series. Okay. So before proceeding uh, to this topic, if you have not subscribed my channel yet, please do subscribe it immediately and hit the bell icon to get all the notifications from my side, right? So this is my channel. If you'll see, lot of videos are there like uh, GitHub and Git entire series, JUnit, CRUD application, end-to-end -end CRUD application, integration test, and uh, microservice entire series. And lot of other videos are also there if you are really interested you can explore those videos as well okay so let's jump into today's topic so let me show you this slide so so already uh, we are in this one so we have covered monolithic app and its disadvantage introduction to microservice and advantages challenges with microservices Spring Cloud intro also we have covered a separate videos are there and setting up base microservices also we have done and reading config from config server no this is not yet done config server setup so today we're gonna discuss config server setup okay so what exactly why exactly we need a config server okay so in microservices space if you see here for example i do have three microservices are there m1 m2 and m3 for each microservices we do have environment specific property file will be there right application hyphen dev dot properties application hyphen qa dot properties application hyphen stays and uat prod those kind of properties will be there okay so in those properties file application specific different properties will be there okay so in microservices one it will be there and microservices two also environment specific properties file will be there and microservices three also those properties will be there okay so if you want to change something we need to go to these microservices and we need to uh, change those or uh, change those properties right so this is very tedious right in different different microservices uh, those properties we need to do a setup right so this is very tedious uh, go to this microservices change and we need to multiple microservices means each microservices we need to go and change their change their those values right so uh, instead of that one just imagine some central uh, some central place will be there where all those properties we can place right some suppose oh, one place is there where we can place uh, microservices m1s all environment specific properties m2s all environment specific property and m3s all environment specific properties then it will be very easy to maintain if you want to check all those properties at a one place we can see all those prep properties we we should not go to m1 microservice m1 or microservice 2 or microservice 3 to verify or check or to modify we should not go to oh, those microservices instead if you can place all those properties in a central place at a one place we can check all those details or if you want to change we can change in that particular space right this is very easy and handy okay that's why to manage the configurations file of different microservices we can go for config server it's a spring cloud project and which will uh, which will provide this feature okay so with the config server you have a central place to manage external properties for applications across all environment so all environment specific properties we can place in a central place okay so basically a config server 
allows you to externally store variables your variables your application will need to run in all environments regardless of life cycle and update them in one centralized place okay so we can store uh, all environment specific properties of different microservices in a centralized place and we can update them in a centralized place okay so in today's uh, lecture we'll see how to set up a config server then in next video we'll see how to fetch the values from config server okay so stepwise we'll see first what we need to do we need to create a spring boot application so how we'll create a spring boot application either a spring initializer spring initializer go to the spring initializer and here just provide your all those details group artifact id name description package name and packaging style and different uh, what is the java version you want to use java 8 and add dependencies so here just we need to do config server just see spring cloud config this config server we want just click that one and generate this project after generating we can import uh, this maven project to our ide okay so already i have generated this project using sts tool and i have imported that project into my ide to uh, to save some time okay i have done that one so let's explore after generating this project how it will be looks like let me close all those files so this is config this is my config server if you'll see let's go to that pom.xml first i will show you in pom.xml if you'll see what the dependencies are there dependencies so config server spring spring cloud config server this dependencies is there okay this one is there and other some default things are present okay after generating this project and importing this into ide so let's see what are the other things we need to do and this is that main class which will be annotated with at the spring boot application and uh, we need to we need to annotate at the red enable config server so we are saying this is the config server at the red enable config server okay so this is thing and another thing we need to have so where we want to store our config files where do you where do you need to store the config files so different backends will be there where you want to store so let me show you different backends what we can use here so this is the spring uh, cloud config project environment repository git as a backend version control backend file system and file system as a backend vault backend aws secret messenger jdbc backend redis backend aws s3 as a backend so a lot of things we can use as a backend backend means where we can store our application dot properties right environment application specific properties files okay so in this example i will show you as a git as a backend git repository as a backend okay so for that one you need to create a uh, at least you need to have a, a git repository so let me show you my git uh how and here i will show you my repository microservice config repo so this is my microservices config repo is there where already i have put some application node properties okay so at least you need to have this one i will explain these uh, two files no worries before that you need to ready with your uh, github account with a repository 
and here so from this application we need to provide that github repository url this repository url we need to provide otherwise how it will fetch this properties file right so we need to link this repository to our application okay so here if you'll see application dot properties server dot port 8085 this is the server port where our config server will run it's 8085 and spring dot cloud dot config dot service dot git dot uri here i have given that github repository url where you want to store your uh, properties file of different different microservice that url i have given okay so just done and here you can store any number of uh, property files so uh, so online hyphen food hyphen service dot properties so online food service this is that application name okay so while i will explaining how to fetch uh, properties from config server that time i will want to explain these things uh, more details so for time being we have seen how to set up a config server okay now let's run this config server and we'll gonna test so let's run this one run our spring boot application meanwhile it's running let me open postman okay so it's running Okay, application was started 8085. Okay, 8085. Let's go to this one. So, localhost column 8085. This is that port where it's our config server is running. And here I am providing online food service hyphen default dot properties. Okay, so here if you we'll hit It, if you'll hit it will uh, provide us those properties okay okay you will see here it's providing us those properties present inside online hyphen food hyphen service hyphen defaulted properties okay so if you want to see let's go to this repository this is spring dot data source i'm using data source url data source username password and sql uh, ddl auto let's see whether these properties are present or not for online hyphen food hyphen service dot properties okay let's see simple url it's present spring data source these are present it's coming from this properties uh, this repository right there are multiple ways we can hit this uh, url okay sorry okay so we have tested that uh, uh, all those properties are uh, coming from that uh, here uh, sorry pretty and json so multiple ways are there you can hit those uh, urls to test whether those data are coming or not right so uh, in this video we have seen how to set up a uh, config server uh, for our microservices uh, for our microservices right so in that uh, next video we'll gonna see how to fetch those properties or how to use those uh, properties by uh, by using config server right instead storing those properties in local properties file we'll store into uh, we'll store in github repository and we'll fetch those properties from there right so hope you uh, hope this video is helpful to people Please do like, share and 
have some valuable comments in the comment section and if you want any other videos uh, let me know i will try to upload those videos as well okay so thank you for watching have a nice day